Hi everyone, I'm Jade. What we're talking about today is some grammatical differences between American English and British English because although we speak the same language and we understand each other, we actually have two varieties of English and we have different rules. We have some different grammar that comes with that. So I think this video is interesting for you if you're learning English and I suggest you use this video to um, just make sure that whichever variety you prefer that you take all the rules associated with that variety. So don't think, oh, I like the rule for collective nouns in uh, American English, that's easier, I'll do that. But for British English, it's easier to spell like that. Don't do that, just keep it standard. Pick one, learn the rules, keep it standard that way. I also think this will be interesting to you if you're a native speaker. So if you're an American, you're a British person, and you just want to compare, just for interest's sake. So let's get started. Number one, collective nouns. A collective noun represents a noun standing for um, a collection of individuals, or not necessarily individuals, but within one bigger thing. So a good example is government. Government, um, do you see it as one thing, making decisions as the government speaking as one voice? Or do you see it as a collection of different political parties um, or even different individuals within one thing, the government? In British English, we, we can make our collective nouns singular or plural to reflect the fact that just because one thing is a group, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're speaking with one voice or one vision. So we can say... Tom's family is or are coming to visit in British English. It just depends. Do you have a happy family? Are you one family happy unit? Or are you a collection of different individuals making up that family? Mom, dad, your brothers, your sisters. In which case you can use are. Um, in British English we can say that. Whereas in American English we have to just use the singular verb. Here's an example. The government have cut spending. Government is seen as one thing. Um, so we use the singular verb. Moving on now, um, rule number two. We have different spelling rules also. Here's one to consider. Spelling for ED words. In American English, it's generally preferred to spell with ED. Let me tell you a story about something on my other YouTube channel. Um, I have a video there that generates quite a lot of uh, negative comments sometimes because I say something about Americans they are not very, very happy when they watch it. And um, sometimes people get really angry. And in a comment, um, somebody was like, hey, you can't even spell. Um, you should spell learned with ED, not a T. And she was like really angry, said all this stuff in there, taking the video way too seriously. And then it started a bit of a comment thread and people were like, hey, you're embarrassing Americans, you can spell it that way and things like this. So that's a good example of how when, you, when you're when you used to your variety, I'm used to British English mainly, I'll sometimes see something in the American variety that confuses me. So obviously that girl hadn't seen, learned spelt with a T before, which is okay in British English. So in American English, you have a couple of exceptions. You would uh, spell dreamt and smelt with a T. Um, I guess because these words sound like they've got T endings. Whereas in British English, we have an option. We can spell words with a T or ED in a lot of cases like Learnt, learned, burned, burnt, dreamed, and dreamt. And they actually have a different pronunciation as well. Um, we have a couple of exceptions too. Um, we don't say smelt and we don't say leapt. We spell these with ed. So um, those are our little spelling differences for you. Um, the third rule now is uh, the past participle of get. Uh, the rule generally, the basic rule is in British English, we can't say gotten. To say gotten 
is wrong in British English. We use got as past participle. Now, I'm observing that people are starting to use gotten in British English. It's not considered standard or grammatically correct, but um, people around my age and people younger than me, they're using gotten now. And I think that's surely the influence of um, American uh, culture, American film and that kind of thing, and TV, and TV series on British people and therefore British language. So how are we using the past participle of get in sentences? You could say, in American English, you could say, I've gotten a headache. And that sentence means talking about the past and in general. Before, at some point in time, I've gotten a headache. We can't use gotten in British English. So what do we say? For talking about the past and the same general meaning, we would need to say, I've had a headache. At some point in my life, I have had a headache. But what if we want to talk about now? What do we say? In fact, we can use the same sentence. In American English and British English, we're talking about now. We can simply say, I've got a headache. And what's important to notice there is we're not using gotten as past participle. We're just using got, the same as British English. And um, point number four for talking about dates. We have um, different conventions about the date. So in American English, they don't use an article. They would say, my birthday, my birthday, I can't say that sound, my birthday is September the 9th. Sorry, I did my British English thing. I put the in there where it doesn't belong in American English. You'd say, my birthday is September 9th. Um, in British English, we need to use the. We say, my birthday is the 9th of September. Also using a preposition there. So those are the first four differences. We've got four more differences to look at. Let's go over the last four differences I'm going to talk about between American English and British English. Number five, talking about recent past events. We have a different preference on the grammatical form to use. In British English, we like to use the present perfect. So we'd say, I have just seen her talking about something that just happened recently. I saw my friend. Then I say, I've just seen her. Whereas the preferred uh, way to say that in American English is with the past simple and using the adverb. So you could say in American English, I just saw her. Um, the adverb here is coming before the verb. And in the present perfect, the adverb is going between the auxiliary verb and the main verb in the sentence. So we say, I have just seen her. I've got two more examples. He already finished compared to he has already finished. And in the question form, did she leave yet? Compared to has she left yet? Um, to say about these last two, these will be uh, heard in spoken American English, perhaps not really written. In written English, um, American, um, it's also possible to use the present perfect, like how we're using it in British English. Let's look at number six now, using got. Um, in informal spoken American English, got can be used in a different way, in a way that's not not really acceptable in British English. So got can be used for necessity. I gotta go. Um, in British English, we would say the same thing with the present perfect. I've got to go or I've got to go. Um, yeah, so our general preference is using the present perfect a bit more than in American English. Let's look at using got for possession. Possession means something you own, something that belongs to you. In American English, informal, spoken, it is possible to say, I got a car. It's not considered correct, but it's said and it's spoken. Whereas in British English, again, we're using the present perfect and we say, I've got a car. Let's look at the next difference now, number seven, compound nouns. A compound noun is when you have two nouns together and the meaning together is one noun. So 
Um, here are some examples. In American English, this is how they're formed. It's verb plus noun, and then you get something like this, jump rope and dive board. But compare that to British English, where we do the form of gerund plus noun, and another way of understanding gerund is verb plus ing. So our preferred forms have ing. So we can say skipping rope means the same as jump rope. When you do that thing, you jump, exercise, or in the playground at school. And the American dive board compares to the English diving board. And that brings us to the last difference I'm going to talk about today. Um, this is the most complicated difference, I think, because um, in American English, it's a lot clearer what is meant. And in British English, this uh, subjunctive mood can be quite hard to grasp what's actually being spoken about. So what is the subjunctive mood? If you want, here's the situation. Your friend wants to um, find out how to uh, get to upstate New York. And somebody says to him, the car hire place or whatever, they said, they suggested he rent a car. And they're talking about now. That meaning is now. Um, they're giving him an option, an, um, an option in the future. Okay, so it's like a hypothetical. It's in the future. Compare that to British English. Two options. First option, you can say, they suggested that he should rent a car. Why is should in there? It's a little bit confusing, okay? Um, my feeling is that should is there because we use should in like a polite way for making offers and that kind of thing. Also in the hypothetical talking about now, they suggested that he should rent a car. And the second way, even more confusing, I think, because we have a back shift in the tense. We say, they suggested that he rented a car. So we back shift there, um, even though the meaning is still talking about now and you know potentially his future action. So yeah, compare this one to, we'll compare these two. They suggested he rent a car, meaning now in American English, compared to they suggested he rented a car, meaning now also with the implication of now. So there are eight grammatical differences for you between American English and English English. Um, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate that. And if you like my, um, my teaching style, please subscribe to my channel, not only on my Ingvid channel, but on my other channel as well, because I've got two channels and you can watch all kinds of lessons on my channel. So um, I'd really appreciate it. And um, oh yes, did I tell you to do the quiz? Go and do the quiz about this, because that way you can exercise your brain and learn more about English and American English. So um, see you and come, come back and see me again. There's a big hug for you and a goodbye for me. Bye.